I, I, I told you guys last week that I was probably going to finish up uh, the series on the anatomy of a Christian. Uh, man, I got to, uh, the Lord started laying some more things on my heart. I don't know how long we're going to go with this. How many knows there's all kinds of uh, uh, parts of the body that, that God is wanting to function in and move uh, in our lives? And so, uh, really, we need to ask our question, how is our spiritual body? How many ever asked yourself that question? How is my spiritual man doing? We, we know how uh, many times our natural man, our physical body is doing by different uh, barometers of different things. We test different things. We take blood sugar. We do all kinds of stuff uh, to, to work on that and to check blood pressures. Uh, but how many knows that we need to do a spiritual checkup every once in a while? Amen. Evaluating. God, where am I at? What's going on in my life? Where am I sitting at, Lord, in, in, in my spiritual walk with God? And so, uh, you know that old saying, you are what you eat. Come on, you are what you eat, so uh, be careful what you eat. How many knows that you can get spiritual uh, tomain poisoning? Y- y'all ever heard that? I don't even know what that means altogether, but I've heard that all my life. But how many knows you can get uh, some spiritually messed up by what you eat? How many knows we need to be careful that we uh, bounce everything off of the Word of God? Amen. Bounce it off the Word of God. If it don't line up with the Word of God, put it in file 13. How many, how many, how many say amen to that? How many's ever heard this saying? You eat the fish and spit out the bones. You got to do that sometimes with things that's going on. So be careful uh, in that area. And so uh, it, all these things that I'm talking about really applies to our spiritual man, who he is. And uh, uh, we, we put in, uh, in our body spiritual food, and it's important that we do that because that reflects on how healthy we are as spiritual beings. How many wants to be healthy in your spiritual man? I know that God wants us spiritually healthy, and it's important. And so for the last several weeks, we've been talking on the subjects of the anatomy of a Christian, what we sometimes think that should look like. But I want to uh, re- uh, reiterate this again, that uh, it's really what God wants for us. How I many wants to line up to God's word and what God is saying, who we are uh, in him, and, and how that we need to function in many of these things? 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 26. I do want to let you guys know I have a lot of scripture tonight, and so if you are taking Taking notes, just get ready to write a lot of those down, uh, if you will. But 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter, verse 26, uh, said this. Or actually, I'm going to read 27 first, then go back to 26. He said, now you are the body of Christ, individual members of it. I mean, that every one of us and every body part makes up the entire body of Christ. And he goes on and says, and backs up in verse 26, he said, if one member suffers, all suffer together. If one member is honored, all rejoice together. How many knows that we are fitly joined together? The body of Christ and the, the parts of the body. And, and that's what we've been talking about is the anatomy. Uh, we've talked about the tongue. We've talked about uh, our mind. We've talked about our heart. All these different things that we've talked about uh, in the body. And tonight, if I can, for just a, a little while, is I want to talk about the feet. Uh, there's so many things about the feet in, in the body uh, when it talks about scriptural references. And um, there's so many things that I could cover tonight. I mean, I didn't even get halfway through studying on this. And I looked down and I was already at nine pages. And I was like, man, i got to dwindle this down. Uh, the, the folks are already going to fall asleep on me. Lord, help me out here. But how many remembers that song, Oh, Be Careful, uh, Little Feet Where You Go? You remember that song? If y'all ever grew up in church, you may have sang some of these songs. Oh, Be Careful, Little Feet Where You Go. Um, you know, he goes on and talks about, because there's a father up above who's looking down in love. Oh, be careful, little feet, where you go. Out of that little, out of that little song that we sing is growing up, how many knows that's so powerful? The simplicity. How many knows that he talks about that even in Corinthians, the 12th chapter there, where he talks about the simplicity of body parts, that some things that we look as uncommon are things that may be not needful. How many knows that every part of the body is needful? Imagine, your feet are pretty needful. How you mobilize, how you get around is so important. And that's uh, in the spiritual aspect, it is so important that we take care of our feet. Uh, how many of you say, I need a spiritual uh, a pedicure? Come on, somebody. Amen. Y'all's like, some of these women, yeah, let's talk about that a little bit. 
No, we need to take care of our, our feet. We need to take care of what God has given us uh, in this. And I want you to not d- to dive in with me uh, uh, on this subject of, of what the feet is. And really, we're just going to kind of do a Bible study tonight. I hope I can slow down. Sometimes I get to talking too fast and going, and I, I preach, teach, and uh, that's not good. It's kind of like a trot, but uh, we're going to try to slow it down and, and, and study this out a little bit tonight. How many knows that the Bible talks in Ephesians, the sixth chapter, verse 15? He talks about a prepared and covered feet. Uh, he said, and, 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 and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In this Ephesians the ch- uh, 6 chapter, he's talking about putting on the whole armor of God, putting on the breastplate of righteousness, taking up the shield of faith, uh, you know, doing all these things. Then he talks about shouting our feet or preparing our feet with the, with the gospel, the readiness of the gospel. How many knows that we need to be prepared? To give an account of the hope that's within us. As, as a follower of Jesus Christ, he's saying, hey, get your feet ready. He says, mobilize yourself. How many knows that we need to prepare the gospel, be, have a readiness of the gospel of peace that's in our life? And, and many times we need to ask ourselves, what are we doing to prepare ourselves? It's not, it's not happening on Sunday morning. It's not happening just on Wednesday night. Heaven knows there needs to be some things happening in every day of our lives to prepare ourselves uh, uh, with the gospel of peace. Uh, if, you're just, if you're just feeding Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings, can I tell you, you're in trouble. Amen. If that's all the, the eating and feeding that you're doing to your spiritual man, you are in trouble. And we need to be thinking and asking ourselves, what am I doing to prepare myself to give an account of the hope of the peace of the gospel of Jesus Christ? And that's, that's a good question to ask ourselves. What am I doing? Am I, am I listening to, to preaching? Am I reading the word of God? Am I spending time meditating and in prayer with God? How many knows that these are things are important? And we've heard about them so many times. But how many knows that sometimes we pull away from these things? The simplicity of just reading the Word of God. The simplicity of just getting in the presence of the Lord. Uh, we, we get uh, busy with life and we get busy with things in, that's going on and we sometimes let some of these simple things in our life slip and before you know it, you're like, man, I can't remember the last time I prayed. I can't remember the last time that I prepared my feet for the gospel to give someone a hope. Come on, how many knows that there are people that need hope today? There are people that need to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. And he says, shod your feet uh, uh, with the gospel, with the readiness given by the gospel of peace. And in another area, he talks about evangelizing. How many knows it's important to evangelize? Amen. Romans 10 and 14, he said this. He said, how then will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Can I tell you tonight, every one of us are called to preach the gospel. Every one of us. You may not be called to a pulpit ministry. You may not be called to a certain specific area of ministry to do that. But every one of us are called to share and preach the gospel of Jesus Christ into our culture. Into, it may be a one-on-one preaching session. Some of the best you can do. Amen. Yeah, what you do on an everyday level is so more valuable and important than many times what I do maybe standing up here behind this pulpit. I'm telling you, it's important that you evangelize. And he said, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Paul was saying here the significance of a person that's sharing the gospel with someone else is, is highly looked upon. How many knows that, that it's so important that you share? And he was even referencing back to Isaiah uh, of the 52 where he said, uh, Isaiah said, uh, the feet of the messenger become beautiful because of the value of what's being delivered. How many knows that that it's so valuable, the gospel that we preach and speak to people? And can I tell you this? Sometimes your preaching is how you live it. Your preaching may not be with words. Your preaching may be with how you live this out and walk this out in your life. And so it's important, and the message of the gospel is so valuable. And, and, and this symbol uh, here of traveling and the effort required to bringing the good news to others. How many knows that that's what he was talking about? How beautiful are the feet of them that bring the gospel or the good news? How many knows that we need to start sharing some good news? There's a lot of negative out there. A lot of negative. All the time, you look around, you can see negative, negative. Hear the news. Listen to what is going on. Everything that's happening, negative, negative. How many knows that we need to start giving some folks some good news? Jesus saves. Come on, church. 
Amen. Jesus still in the, in the delivering business. Jesus is still a healer. Come on. We need to begin to tell people and give people hope of what's going on. Another uh, scripture talks about running. How many knows that we need to run this race with endurance? Hebrews 12 and 1 said this. He said, therefore, we are also, uh, uh, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Uh, the scripture is talking here, and every time that you ever see in the scripture the word therefore, you need to go back and look why it's therefore. Okay? Just some good Bible uh, homiletics there. Uh, you, that's, you need to go look. Every time you see that word, what he's saying is look back at why that scripture's there in the first place. And so you go back and look at the 11th chapter of Hebrews. What was it talking about? It was talking about the heroes of faith, the faith chapter. Uh, man, that they subdued enemies. They did all these things uh, because of faith. And he said all of these folks are, are a witness. We are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. Who? The heroes of faith. Can I tell you what they're doing tonight? They are cheering us on. Amen. I told I couldn't study, preach, or however. I'm telling you, I gotta, it's just in me. We, we, they're cheering us on to say, hey, you got to keep going. All those that have gone on before us, I believe with all of my heart, they are cheering us on. We're surrounded about with a great cloud of witness, and they are saying, hey, keep running the race. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep running with everything that's within you. Amen. God gave us this feet to run. You need to run with everything that's within you. Amen. He gave you feet, spiritual feet, to keep on moving. Amen. You got to keep running. We got to do it with endurance. That word endurance is strength to keep going on. Another word for it is stamina. How many knows that God gives us what we need to keep on running? Keep on running. Don't quit. Don't give up. If you fall down, get up and keep on running. Amen. If you stumble, get up and keep on running. If, if you think you can't go another mile, I'm telling you there's something about a second wind that kicks in. How many of y'all has ever run? How many of y'all got any runners in the house? Amen. Some of you may have run a 5K. Whether you believe it or not, I have actually ran a few 5Ks. I know that's a, uh, you know, you don't believe that. But anyhow, uh, uh, there's something that kicks in called a second wind that you get. That's the endurance that he's given. How many knows that we need a second wind of the power of the Holy Spirit? Amen. That'll keep us moving on and keeping us running this race of endurance you've got to you got to get to the finish line amen you need to tell somebody that I got to get to the finish line I got to finish what God has started in me I got to keep moving he talks on another scripture uh, a feat uh, is representing authority and power that is why the scripture is telling us uh, that one day all things will be put under Christ's feet there, there's some authority and power uh, in our feet. Listen to what Matthew 22 and 44 said. He said, the Lord said to my Lord, sit in the place of honor at my right hand until I humble your enemies beneath your feet. Amen. How many knows that God has given us some authority and power over the enemy that's trying to destroy our lives? Some of you need to recognize your position in who you are in God. That the enemy is under your feet. 1 Corinthians 15, 25 said this, For Christ must reign until, all, uh, until he humbles all his enemies beneath his feet. Ephesians 1 and 22 said this, And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to the church. Hebrews 2 and 8 said this, You have uh, put all things in subjection under his feet. For in that he put all in subjection under his feet, uh, 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 under him. He left nothing that is not under him, but now we do not yet see all things put under him how many knows that God has put us in a position that the enemy amen is under our feet or some of us, some of us sometimes we live so way below our privileges in God so way below the position that God is wanting to position you how many knows that we are positioned at the right hand with Christ amen that we're seated with him in heavenly places. And we need to take our place. And, and when we understand that, I'm telling you, we understand that, there, that the enemy's under our feet. There's authority and power in that. Amen. If you want to give the devil a message, you need to write it on the bottom of your shoe. Come on, somebody. I've heard that all my life, but I had to say it again tonight. If you want to give the enemy a message of what's going on in your life, you need to write it on the bottom of your shoot because the enemy is under our feet. Amen. God has given us power and authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Come on. That's what the word of God says. How many of us, we need to start believing what the word of God says and quit letting the devil beat you up. Oh, come on. Amen. 
So we have power and authority in our feet. He also gives us feet that do not stumble. Feet that, that slip or stumble uh, symbolize many times of falling into sin. How many, how many slipped up and stumbled every once in a while? Every one of you need to raise your hand because all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. We've, we've slipped and stumbled, but listen to what the word of God says here. Job 12 and 5, he said, a lamp is despised in the thought of one who is at ease. So, how many has ever been at ease? Thought you had it all together. Come on. Sometimes I thought, you know, man, I got this. I finally got this wolf. That's when you need to watch out. Amen. Is when you think that you got everything going. But then he goes on and says, it is made ready for those whose feet slip. How many knows that we need a lamp of the word of God continually burning in our hearts and in our lives? Psalm 37 and 31 said this, they have made God's law their own so they will never slip from his path. Psalms 56 and 13 said this, For you have rescued me from death. You have kept my feet from slipping. So now I can walk in your presence, O God. And in your life-giving light. Amen. For the, for the sake of, of time tonight, there's so many scriptures on this that's talking about uh, 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 not slipping. Psalms 66 and 9, if you're writing this down. Psalms 73 and 2. Psalms 116 and 8. Psalms 121 and 3. All of these verses talking about your feet not slipping when we get our our lives lined up in the word of God how many knows we need to get our feet in the word of God man lined up he said I will not forsake your word God makes our feet secure he keeps us on firm ground amen and and, and ground that we cannot sin in how many that how many knows that God wants to put us upon a rock amen Man, a rock that we can stand upon. And, and, and he makes our steps sure in our lives. He makes a, a place that we can have a stable foundation. Psalms 18 and 33 in verse 36 said this. He makes my feet like the deer, uh, the feet of a deer and sets my uh, feet up on high places. I'm telling you, have y'all ever watched a deer so, so elegant in how they stand and so stable and secure? How many knows that God wants to give us that stability in our life? How many, how many may raise the hand and I said, Lord, I need some stability in my life amen I'm gonna raise it my hand with you we need some stability in our life amen that stability comes from the word of God you want to get stable and consistent in your life I'm telling you, there's nothing like being stable and consistent in your life some of us need to learn that in, in, in how to become that we learn that through God's word amen and, and we learn that that he says he makes my feet like the feet of deer when, when we get in the presence of God God begins to put some stuff in us amen that makes us stable and stuck. How many, how many says, man, I'm ready to get connected up, amen, with God and the things of God. And so verse 36, he says, you enlarge my path under me so my feet do not slip. <laughs> how many knows he makes a, a ground bigger than what it may be so that we can never slip. He secures our feet. Psalms 40 in verse 2 said this, he drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog or clay, he set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. Amen. How many's ever been caught in a pit? Amen. Been in a, in a pit in your life, you're like, man, I don't know if I can get out of this. The Bible says that he brings me up out of the miry clay. Uh, this was David that, that wrote this, this uh, song uh, and this, this psalm here. He said, out of the miry clay. Can I tell you, David went from the mire of the clay to the choir. Amen. How many knows that God will bring you up out of the pit of things that's in your life and put you in position and place you in places that you thought you never could? Amen. I've been in pits. I've been in the slimy mire of sin and, and all the different different things that come along with that but God says I'm going to raise up a group of people that will come out of that pit and begin to sing amen with a song that they do not even imagine that's what David was David was a psalmist he sang and God brought him out of the mire and put him in the choir amen how many knows that God can do that in your life tonight too he can change our situations one of the greatest scenes of servanthood that we see in the Bible is about the feet Amen. He, the Bible, the, most people walked barefooted wherever they went, and, and the, uh, the simple sandals that they were, were wearing, they exposed their feet to all kinds of element and stuff. Everybody say, stuff. Yeah, y'all will get that in a little bit. But in, even today, in the Middle Eastern time, they still wear sandals, and when they go into places of honor and places of, uh, of worship, they will take off their shoes. And we, we see this story in John of the 13th chapter, how that, that Jesus discipled together together for uh, the Last Supper, and, and, and Jesus, uh, really this, this 
uh, uh, thing of washing the feet was really assigned to one of the lowest members of the staff. This was something that was not uh, normally the guest would not do that. The, the person that was hosting the, the, the house or being there, that was not the person that washed those people's feet. It was the lowest of the, the servant, the one that was on the lowest totem pole of serving. They was the one that washed everybody's feet as they come in. But the Bible says that here in John that Jesus uh, took off uh, his robe and he began to wash the feet of every one of the disciples talking about servanthood. How many knows that we need to walk in humility and serving others? Serve one another in love is what the word of God says. I'm saying when we learn how to be a servant, Jesus taught us all these things. He, he taught us these things so that we can understand what it really means to, to do that. And he washed each one of their feet. And, of course, Peter, you know, he said, Lord, you ain't washing my feet. You know, you're not going to do that. How many knows that we can get, let pride get in the way? Amen. And that's what Peter did. And the Lord said, if I don't wash your feet, you're not going to go to make it. You're not going to make it to heaven. And he said, oh, Lord, wash my whole body. You know how Peter was. He's always sticking his feet in his mouth, which is something that we sometimes do. How many relates to Peter tonight? Amen. Y'all don't have to raise your hand. Glory. But, but Peter, Peter did that. And, and, and this, but Jesus was trying to show him that, hey, it's about servanthood. It's, it's about serving one another. And I'm, I'm willing. How many is willing to get down in the, in the nitty gritty and serve one another? Man, I don't mind taking on what I need to do to serve what God wants me to serve. And, and, and we need to use this and understand this symbol of what this feet meant. Uh, another area, uh, Psalms 119 and 105 talks about direction and clarity. It symbolizes that. How many need some direction and clarity in your life? He said this, Psalms 119, 105, probably one of, uh, a very familiar scripture. He said, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Your word, if y'all know all this is talking about, we've got to get into the word. Our feet have to get on, on a solid rock. The word represents a, a solid foundation. We've got to get our feet. He said, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my, uh, my path. How many ever tried to walk in the dark? Man, I'm telling you, you can get in some trouble really fast. I fell into a few ditches. I like to go hunting, and, and to go hunting, sometimes you got to get up before daylight, and, and you know, you're not allowed, if you're a real man, you're not allowed to carry a flashlight. Just kidding. That was just a joke. But, it, but uh, you, you have to walk in the dark. I have ended up in some messes uh, in the dark by walking out in the field uh, in the middle of, of nowhere, and I didn't have, I kind of had an idea of where I was at. How many knows that we need to, uh, to understand that, that God's word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto to our path. You don't have to walk in darkness. You don't have to walk in darkness. And so I've stumped, how many's ever stumped your toe in the dark? Man, my wife will change our furniture around in our house and I'll forget about it, get up in the middle of the night or put something in a different place that I'm not used to. I don't know about you, but I sleepwalk in the middle of the night uh, just naturally, just one of those things that I do. And so I've bumped my toe a lot and, and uh, it's not fun to do that in the middle of the night. But that's what happens when we walk in the dark. I mean, it's just as simple sometimes to turn on a light. And we need to turn on the light of God's word into our lives. And when we begin to turn on the light of God's word in our life, it begins to reveal areas of danger that may be in your life. So turn on the word. Turn on the word of God in your life. Amen. And, and, and quit falling around in the darkness. I mean, knows that we need to uh, walk out what we believe. Uh, Ephesians 4 and 1 and 2 said this right here. He said, I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. With all humility and gentleness, uh, patience, bearing with one another in love. Paul here was writing the scripture to the Christians that they, that they have to understand that God uh, is wanting us to walk out what we, what we believe. Come on. If we say we believe something, how many knows we need to walk in that? That's what he's saying here. He said, walk out what you've been called in with humility and gentleness and patience, forbearing one another in love. And another a scripture in Matthew 28 verse 9 talks about feet that run to Jesus, a worshiping feet. And, and behold, in verse 28 verse 9 of Matthew it says, and behold, Jesus met them and said greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and they worshiped him. I'm telling you, isn't there so many powerful references about the feet? How many knows that we need to fall at the feet of Jesus? We need to run to the feet of Jesus. How many has ever had to run to the feet of Jesus? 
Man, I've had to run to him. Luke 10 and 39 said, and, and, and she had a sister called Mary who also sat at the feet of Jesus and heard his word. You may have heard of the story of Martha and Mary. Martha was cumbered about with so many things and busy with what was going on to take care of Jesus that was in the house, but she forgot about the most important thing, and that was sitting at the feet of Jesus. How many knows that we've got to learn how to sit at the feet of Jesus? That's what he was talking about here. Feet that learn, that know how to run to him. Feet that know how to worship him. I, I, I know where I get my strength from. I know where my help comes from. It comes from the Lord. Amen. When I need help in my life, in my spiritual life, I don't run to this or that. I run to Jesus. Amen. I run to his feet. I run to worship him. And that's what we need to do. Quit running to everything else and trying to fulfill that longing, that void that's in your life. It will never be filled by drugs. It will never be filled by alcohol. It will never be filled by the arms of someone else. The only one that can fill the voids in your life, his name is Jesus tonight. We need to run at his feet that's what Jesus was saying here to Mary Mary you have chosen the good part that was worshiping him how many knows that we need to run to Jesus because I'm telling you there's healing power at the feet of Jesus there's forgiveness at the feet of Jesus there's forgiveness at the feet of Jesus we need to run to him nobody else is going to give you that amen nobody is ever ever going to come close to giving you what Jesus can give you in your life so we need to run to him amen we need to choose a path amen that's a beeline to who he is amen in our lives forget all that other stuff amen forget all that other stuff Run to Jesus. I, I got to keep moving here. Mark, Mark the 10th chapter, verse 50. I told you I had a lot of notes here. Mark the, the 10th chapter, verse 50, uh, talks about obedient feet. He said, throwing his cloak aside, he jumped to his feet and came to Jesus. Listen to that. Uh, an obedient feet. How many knows that we need to be obedient to the call that God is calling you? If God is calling you to move, if God is calling you to, to take action, that's really what he was talking about here in your life. How many knows that we need to be obedient to that? I'm telling you, his word is going to call you to action. Uh, the preaching that, that, that I preach many times is going to call people to action. I believe that the word of God will challenge us. I believe the word of God will get right in our face, amen, and say, hey, you've got to do some action and submit and be obedient to the word of God. Uh, how many ever heard this saying before? If you are delaying, you are disobeying. If you're delaying, you're disobeying. How many knows that we need to move when God says move? When God is saying do something, don't worry about what people are going to say. Don't worry about what people are thinking. Can you imagine this man? He threw his cloak aside. He jumped to his feet, and he ran to where Jesus was at. If he wouldn't have done that immediately, Jesus was walking by here. He was moving. He was on the move. And this man, uh, Jesus called and says, hey, come. Come to me. And he jumped up and went to him. How many knows that we got to move when God is moving in our lives? When God is calling, when God is, is, is urging us. How many ever been urged by the power of the Holy Spirit maybe to call somebody? Move in that. Be obedient. It will not only bring a blessing to them, but it will bring a blessing to your life. Amen. Many times we think, oh, it's just going to do that or this. No, it, it, God, God uh, reciprocates that. Amen. That, that comes right back to you when you begin to move in obedience to God. I'm telling you, miracles happen when we move. When we are obedient and submissive uh, uh, and, and fall at the feet of Jesus, I'm telling you, things happen miraculously in our lives. Uh, in Luke, the seventh chapter, he talks about loving feet. The story in Luke tells of a woman it had been forgiven of much. This woman, verse 38, says, it says that, that she stood at his feet behind him weeping. And she began to wash his feet with tears and wipe them with her hair of her head. And she kissed his feet and anointed them with fragrant oil. Uh, verse 45 said this, and you gave me no kisses. She was talking, Jesus was talking to all the people that were there in that place. They made fun of her. They looked it down upon her for what she was doing. And, and Jesus said this in reply, he said, you gave me no kisses, but this woman has not ceased to kiss my feet since the time that I came in. In verse 47, he said this, he said, therefore I say to you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. How many has been forgiven of a lot? Amen. How many knows that we need to learn how to fall at the feet of Jesus and say, Jesus, I worship you. I thank you. We need to love much. If you've been forgiven of much, love much. Amen. That's what was going on in the scripture. I'm telling you, we can learn how to love who Jesus is. Amen. Because I don't know about you, but because of how he's forgiven me, I'll learn uh, through that how much he's loved me. 
Amen. And we can learn how to love others just as much. Uh, my last two thoughts is this. The, 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 this, this first one here is focused feet. How many knows that we got to stay focused? Focused. Hebrews 12 and 13 said this. Mark out a straight path for your feet so that those who are weak and lame will not fall but become strong. I love this scripture because he's dealing with two things here. He's talking about us being focused in the area of our lives. And then he's talking about, hey, because when we stay focused, it's going to cause others to become stronger in our life. Can I I tell you something? People are watching your life. People are looking at your life. And when we stay focused on the prize and keep running the race and keep going in the direction that God has called, I'm telling you, it will not bring only life to yourself, but it will bring life to others. Amen. You follow Jesus where he leads. How many knows that staying focused? Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he takes me, I will follow. Lord, I'm tuned in to your direction in my life. We have to stay focused in our life. How many knows it's so easy to get distracted? So easy to get distraction. And can I tell you, it's easy to get distracted on good things. Somebody say amen. Good things, things that are urgent, things that are important, things that, that may even be church-related, things that, that we think that, that will bless our families, things that we, that we look at and say, man, this will help. But heaven knows that sometimes you can get so busy in some of those stuff that you can't focus on what God is speaking in your life at that moment. Man, it happens so many times. There's a, a good word that we need to learn, and that word is called no. We need to learn that, that we can speak no to some things that, hey, I, I, I've got I've to say no to this now so I can not miss out on the better things that God has for my life. Amen. Sometimes we miss out on some good things in our life because we've said yes to all this other stuff in our life and, and didn't know how to say no and miss out on the, the main thing that God was wanting to bring into our life. How many of us that's so good teaching tonight? Amen, that we've got to stay focused on these areas of our life. And don't get uh, uh, stuck in the mud of just wheel spinning. How many knows that we can look busy? Some of us have it down really well. You can look busy in life and all you're doing is just spinning your wheels because you're focused on the wrong things. You need to focus on what God is leading you in life. You know what? how you do that? You get in prayer. You get into a place of meditation. You get into a quiet place. We, we learned something at the men's summit this week, and it was spoken by the men's leader there. He said prayer and meditation sometimes is us just being quiet. Come on. How many knows that sometimes we just need to get in the presence of the Lord? How can God speak to us if we're always rattling? Amen. How can God direct our, our thoughts and our minds and our lives when we're always asking or saying, God, help me in this area or that area? How many of us, sometimes we just need to get in the presence of the Lord and be quiet, amen, and let God speak direction in our life? I got I to give you my last thought here. Amen. The, the last thought is this, wandering feet. How many ever had wandering feet? We could even call this happy feet. Come on. He says in Jeremiah, the 14th uh, chapter, verse 10, he said this. He said, this is what the Lord says about this people. They greatly love to wander. They do not refrain or or restrain their feet. So the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their wickedness and punish them for their sins. This is not just talking about unbelievers. How many knows that many times, even as followers of Christ, we wander away? We have wandering feet, wandering minds. How many has ever just let your mind wander? Yeah, kind of goes off into... Uh, another another place another space amen uh others wonder uh many times in the way that we do things our methods of life uh uh, others wonder from their faith from uh in sinful lifestyles and and and, in different things that eventually destroy our faith how many has ever kind of wandered away from from god how many knows it can be so easy because we create habits really fast we, we, we create, yeah, bad habits. We create habits in our life, really fast in our life, that, that will cause us to wander away. And before you know it, you look up and you're like, man. I, I talk to people all the time. I said, Pastor, or they'll, they'll say, man, I haven't been in church in a while. And I'll, I'll talk to them and say, how come you haven't been in church or done this or that? And they said, man, I just kind of got out of the habit of it. Come on, how many knows that we can get out of the habit of doing things and, and doing the things that we know that's good in our life? That is not my phone. I don't know whose that is. It's kind of up in this area, though. Amen. But, but how many of us, we want, my mind just wondered. How many of us, <laughs> great timing on that. Amen. 
We get wandering minds that just distract us and keep us from doing the things that we know. But how many knows that when you stay linked in to what God is wanting us to do and act in, in faith and move in faith and, and be obedient to the things of God and keep our minds from wandering from these things. Amen. Uh, you know, many times when we look at this, uh, sometimes the only Bible that people ever see, if we wander away, how many knows that we'll lead other people away too? We will. And many times the, the, the only Bible that some people see is you. It's the only Bible they're going to hear. It's the only Bible that they're going to see is what you're doing in your life. How many knows that we've got to stay straight? There's one scripture that talks about uh, the blind leading the blind. How many we'll wander off in things and it's the blind leading the blind. The Bible said that both will fall into a pit. If, if we don't stay focused on what God has for our lives, and I'm telling you, God has purpose, God has direction, God has destiny for your life. And you need to understand that, that God has got great things for you. You need to plug into what God is saying and doing in your life, amen, and understand that God is wanting to bring this stuff into our lives, but we got to keep our minds from wondering. And how many knows the enemy is the best at, at putting thoughts in things that will cause us to wander away? He will. Distractions, things that will come along. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I'm squirrel chaser sometimes. Y'all just seen it in action just a second ago. My mind wanders. Things happen. How many of us when you stay focused on the Word of God? I like this quote that I come across, and I close with if our musicians will come uh, tonight. Uh, the quote, quote is this, All things may be forgiven, but they still damage our minds. How many of us that all things will be forgiven, but we need to be careful what we allow into our minds because there can be some permanent damage that takes place. How many of us we can never sometimes get memories out of our minds? You don't have to hang on to those memories. You don't have to dwell in those memories. You don't have to live in those memories. Amen? Come on. But I'm telling you, they're still there many times. And so be careful. Stay focused on what God is wanting you to focus on because I'm telling you, we sometimes will regret uh, uh, what's gone on in our life and, and we don't need to dwell in that place. We don't need to live in regret. How many knows we need to live in faith? Man, don't live in regret. Don't live in these areas of your life but say, God, I need you to help me to stay focused. I want you just, if you can, just stay right there where you're at. I just want you to bow your heads in this place tonight. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this word tonight, God. Lord, thank you, Lord, that you've given us feet, God, that gives us motion. God, we thank you that you've given us feet, God, that give us direction. And all these things in your word that this symbolize and talks about feet, God. Lord, we thank you for this tonight, Lord. That, God, we can understand what this, the spiritual meaning of that is in our hearts. And, Lord, I pray, God, that you help us to stay on the, the straight and narrow path. God, that you keep us from wondering, Lord, and we understand that that comes from us Connecting to your word, God, and connecting to, to the body of Christ and staying connected to church. And Lord, we thank you for, uh, God, bringing this word to us tonight, God, and help us to understand this on a better level, God, and help us to grow in this area of our life. God, we give you all the praise tonight. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name, we pray amen and amen.